Hey everyone, in the last two videos in this series, we took a look at how you could do authentication either via an email or via a code to get access to a player's authenticated wallet and prove that they own the assets that they have. Now, before we go into actually taking a look at the APIs and other features that you can use to easily read the state of the player's wallet and verify NFTs and tokens, I wanted to take a second to actually show where that metadata is stored once a player has authenticated. So in this episode, we're just gonna quickly walk through the bearer token as a concept, how you can get access to it, how you can decrypt it, and how you can leverage that information in whatever you feel is the best way for your application. As always, if you have questions, hit me up on Discord to get an application ID and try out the SDK, or you can also always check out the documentation, which will be linked in the description. We'll be starting from where we left off in the email login video. So if you want to get yourself up to speed following along, go ahead and watch that previous video. But for the purposes of this, I want to go ahead and let's take a look at the script and then we'll talk about the bearer token. So just like we left off, you have an email that will do the authentication for you. And in fact, one thing to note is as long as the token that proves the ownership of the assets is valid, it's gonna be cached for your project. So you don't have to have a player re-authenticate over and over again. And more specifically, that token is going to be stored in your instance dot bear, get bearer token. So this is specific to the player and specific to your application ID. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and we'll take a look at the actual token itself. So I've gone ahead, click run here. This first log you'll see is null because the player has actually already been registered. So that's why there's no code that's needed. And that's actually a good hint for you in case you want to check if there was actually cached data. If you ever need to de-cache it and then re-register, you can always just recall the register function or log out. And here's our token here. You can see it's pretty massive, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we will go ahead and paste that into a JWT token decoder. So this is a JSON web token. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. At a very high level, JWT tokens are JSON metadata that represents a, uh, a user in this case. And the idea is that you can have JSON data that's stored, but then have a component of it that's encrypted so that you can't change the metadata inside of this token without re-encrypting it. So you have these two components here that allow the token to be secure and also prove whether or not this token has actually been manipulated. And if so, it's an invalid token. So that's the security that's baked into this uh, concept, which is extremely powerful, especially in the case of authentication. The convenient part is the data itself is actually completely wide open and viewable. So once you have a token, you can see here, everything about that specific uh, token is stored in the payload. So you can see the application ID, you can see the address, you can see a signature, and you can see the time that the token was created and the expiration date. So this is just a few hours from now. And the important part is you have the public key of the wallet that was authenticated and you have the signature. And in this case, this application ID won't be usable, so, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but this in and of itself is passed to you back into Unity. So if you ever want to do your own validation against this payload, you can do so. So that's all stored in this encoded metadata here. And that is part of your get bearer token function. So that is incredibly important. And if you ever want to decode it, you can go ahead and run chain off manager decode JWT. And then in this case, if you want, just pass the bearer token in, that will return, as you can see, a, a key value pair, which will be all of the metadata that is associated in here. So at that point, you have a dictionary. If you query for the app ID, you'll get it, address, signature, etc., And you can do whatever you want with that data. 
In fact, if you wanna see an example of this, if you head over to the chain off manager and then we go to, and if we go to our authenticated crypto APIs, you'll see that on the get address, we're calling our decode function. And then we just return the address that's stored within that JSON. So very easy to play around with it, but I wanted to highlight it because it's a very key component component of this authentication process. As I mentioned at the top, that token is what represents your authenticated player. It does have an expiration date. So at some point you will have to re-authenticate your users. The next set of videos will actually go ahead. And now that you have an authenticated player, you have the token. You'll be using that token behind the scenes to call all of the SDK functions to read the state of the blockchain on behalf of the player. So we'll look forward to that in the next video and I'll see you there.